we are seeing that the, the income growth, I mean the growth in consumption, is really growing. That's the truth. But how do you respond mm. to some critics who will say, you know, Uganda has the potential, frankly, yeah. especially yeah. when it comes to agriculture. Yes, it has. All you have to do is travel in the eastern part of the country mm. and see how fertile That's the soil right. is. You travel in Buganda, central mm. region. You travel in western Uganda. You go to northern Uganda, to Acholiland and what have you. You see the soil, you see everything, but there are no results. Mm -hmm. Why? What do you think needs to be done, has not been done yet, so that we can begin to see the situation, frankly, turning around? Okay. Uh, I wanted to respond on the first one. I think that's the mentality of uh, people even outside that Uganda soils are fertile. But what I can assure you that the f soil fertility is really going down at a very fast rate. Why? It's really we have overused that soil for so many times. Lack of fertilizers, use. lack of... Yeah. Now, what government is doing now, they, there is now more focus on the agricultural sector. If you look at the last two during the last two financial years, there is slightly some more focus on the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. What we are lacking is really having a holistic approach to the agricultural sector, because it has so many problems. So somebody has to think through, mm -hmm. how best can we address issues in this agricultural sector? You cannot start saying, okay, let me go for fertilizer, and you leave the other inputs aside. Okay, it has to really be a holistic approach if we are, if we are to really improve the agricultural productivity in Uganda. I see. Mm. Let's go to the uh, lifeline of the show, who, which are the telephone callers. Let's go to Tedla from New York. Uh, good afternoon, Tedla. You're most welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Yeah, good afternoon, Shaka, and good afternoon to, the, to your guests. I'm there. hugely terrific. Uh, what is your question, Tedla? I, I want Forrest to, to give me a second to, con to say Happy New Year to my fellow Ethiopians back home and in the diaspora. You Ethiopian got it. 2005, yes. You got it, and Happy New Year, all Ethiopians indeed. <laughs> well, we, we, it was really a very slow, a very low profile celebration because it happens to be always coming on 9 11, so we don't make too much noise <laughs> on that day. And also, of course, uh, it came uh, after the death of Ethiopian Prime Minister Meles Zenawi. What about that? Well, uh, well, Shaka, well, that's another matter. Let me come to, <laughs> to a question which is dear to me and to most Africans. There was a study made a year ago which says, which quantifies the capital, the illicit capital flight from African countries. And I can take Ethiopia as an example. Mm -hmm. From year 2000 to 2009, $11.5 billion worth of capital illicitly went out of the country. My question to your, to your guest is that a poor country like Ethiopia, where we don't, we don't sell oil, stuff like that, $11.5 billion on 2009 alone, $3.7 billion was out of the country. How an African nation like Ethiopia can establish a foundation of infrastructure or whatever you said, if such capital dollars is flying out of the country, there is no way we can develop our country. So for us, unless there is accountability, this also goes directly to the Western countries where their banks are used to, to bring in all these African dollars outside of the country. African will remain always a beggar continent. So we have to be sure that there should be a, an investigation. This is a, a crime on humanity, on our poor people, by taking out a lot of money from African countries. Thank you very much. Uh, would you like to respond yeah. to that? Uh, uh, yeah. I, uh, uh, thank you very much, the, the caller from Ethiopia. I think the, the issue of illicit capital flows is one of the issues that we have actually been tackling at, uh, at our think tanks and also here at the Brookings Institution. One thing that we know is that uh, if we could actually uh, curtail these flows, we would not even need any financial support from developing countries. So we are saying, and it's not just, uh, you know, there are many ways of uh, financial flows, whether it's the natural resources, uh, you know, very, very uh, 
dubious transactions. So I think the, all, the, the, the CORA is right on the mark that this is an issue, but the problem is not just developing countries, the African countries, the problem is also the developed countries. The developed countries, yes. but frankly, I think that uh, the onus is on the yes. developing yes. countries. It's true, I agree. And in fact, the, 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 the panel of uh, eminent African personalities have actually been focusing on this issue now, uh, looking at the uh, annually, looking at the illicit capital flows, and trying to actually talk to the, tell the government they have to put a check on this. And you go back to the issues of governance. So I agree with the core that this is an important issue. Mm -hmm. And we as Africans, again, we can't shift the brim. It's our responsibility. But if we could control these illicit flows, we would actually not need any foreign aid uh, I see. at all. I see.